All right, guys, so I recently changed out the QR1 on my Fanatec DD1 for the new QR2. Now here you see me measuring the distance between the wheel and the wheelbase. There was a question about how much does this change uh, when you switch out from the QR1 to the QR2. Um, so we'll record that number and we'll see what it is on the flip side. So when you look at the QR2, there's a short end and a long end. And also there's a Fanatec logo on top. So once you're used to it, you can kind of tell where the top is. But when you're new to how this thing is shaped, it helps to have that logo to know which way is up. Um, but yeah, so there, there's a short end and a long end that you have to worry about. Um, the short end of the QR2 uh, that I'm holding here that goes to the long end of the base, which you'll see in a second So the way that this thing comes out you, you definitely have to be careful So by this point I've already I've loosened the collar up as you can see here uh, So You have to gently twist as You pull it out or at least that's what I found that that helps at least and then you want to untwist it 10 times um, and the reason is is that you want to untwist these these cables so as you untwist these you see that eventually they become straight again it's about 10 rotations just mark a point on on the QR1 and keep an eye on it and then after that you can um, gently detach them you see me here moving the locking nut in place um, one thing that you have to be careful about, though, is that they don't pull themselves back up into the base because then it's going to be a little tricky to fish them out. So just kind of make note of that. Um, and just make it so that the plastic catches on the edge there a bit when you take it off. So now here I'm taking the long on the new QR2 and attaching it to the short part from the base and the short part from the QR2 to the long part on the base. And then it kind of goes back in the way that it came out as a QR1. It goes back in as a QR2. You have to twist, um, in this case, clockwise about 10 times. And again, it's about 10 rotations here. And then you want to make sure that this metal piece is as aligned as possible. Uh, as you can see from the camera angle here, I don't have it all that well aligned and it's not going in. <laughs> so well, it's only once I get it aligned that it actually starts to slide in well. And then here we Get alignment. Giving it another try just to make sure it goes in. Yeah, so there was probably a cable that was bunched up, and you really don't want to force it because you don't want to pinch a cable. There we go. So, yeah, you just have to go slow. Make sure it feels like you're not having to force it too much, and eventually it will work its way in. Now here you have to make sure that you align the collar so that the two gaps on the shaft line up with the two gaps on the collar. They have to be aligned before you torque them down. And then once it looks good at that point, you want to start to torque it down. And of course there's two bolts and you want to go back and forth, make sure that you're not putting too much pressure on one side versus the other. And here I'm using a torque wrench. So it, there's no torque wrench that's included in the box. A lot of people claim that you don't need a torque wrench. I disagree with that. You need 10 Newton meters of torque here. That's what it calls for. Let me say this. When I was turning the torque wrench for what I felt like what should have been 10 Newton meters was actually something on the order of five or six. Uh, maybe some people are able to do this by feel. I definitely can't. 
I think you need a torque wrench. And here I'm using one that's made for a bike. They're pretty common. If you have a friend who's really into biking, you probably can find one that, um, that works in this range. On the wheel side, we have to go down to one nanometer. I'll, I'll show that as well, but I had to use a different torque wrench, one meant for those lower levels for that piece. But for, for the base side, you need something that covers 10 in its workable range. And here I'm showing the bike wrench and how I have it dialed in right around 10. And so the way that a torque wrench like this works is you set the torque level that you want and then it will click, it will give when it goes past that point. So once you're all done, you have to make sure that you turn on the base. You have to go through the procedure to calibrate it with the wheel off. And you want to make sure it's centered. Then beyond that, you're done. And then finally to wrap this up, we want to measure once again. And even with QR2, the distance between the edge of the wheel and that top part of the wheel base is 14.2 centimeters, exactly the same. So, um, yeah, you don't really need to adjust where the base is in your rig. You just change out QR1 for QR2, and everything should be exactly how you had it. But yeah, that's it for today, folks. Um, there's another video uh, about installing QR2 on the wheel side, so you should see that now on your screen. And, um, yeah, thanks for watching.